Hi, happy autistic pride to you all and welcome to this presentation from Neurodivergent Labour. My name's Janine Booth, I'm the Chair of ND Labour and I'm going to talk you through some stuff about us. So what am I going to tell you about Neurodivergent Labour? I'm going to tell you who we are, our manifesto, I'm going to tell you about our activities and about how you can get involved. So who are we? First of all, we have to start with what is neurodivergence, which uh, may well not be news to some of you, but I don't want to take anything for granted. So there you go. Uh, humanity is a neurologically diverse. It consists of individuals who have different brain wiring or structure from each other. And neurological differences include autism, attention deficit disorders, dyslexia, dyspraxia, and many more. So what does that mean neurodivergent labour is? Well, we are a representative and campaigning organisation of Labour Party members and supporters who are neurologically divergent. We were founded in 2019. This is our founding meeting with lots of people voting, voting to set up ND Labour and also voting to adopt these as its core aims. We aim to develop socialist policy on neurological diversity to win support for Labour among neurodivergent people and their supporters, to campaign against discrimination, exclusion, oppression and injustice, and for equality for neurodivergent people, to provide, to provide support to neurodivergent Labour Party members who are experiencing discrimination. We aim to work to make the Labour Party more accessible to its neurodiverse membership, to work towards a social model of neurodiversity, about which more shortly, to empower, provide agency, voice and representation of and by neurodivergent people in the Labour Party, in public office and in society, and to maintain, develop and promote a manifesto. We have a couple of patrons um, who it's kind of it's sort of an honorary position, I suppose, but it's also they do also actively campaign for us. And in particular, we chose two MPs, two Labour MPs who consistently raise our issues in Parliament. And that's John McDonnell MP and Nadia Whittam MP. Um, we went for either end of the age and experience uh, scale with John, who's been a lifelong socialist and has uh, supported neurodivergent Labour uh, for many years and taken up autism issues for many years. And Nadia Whittam MP, um, who is the youngest MP in the House of Commons, and I think she's 23 now, and um, has taken up our issues with, with some gusto. Okay, so that manifesto we were talking about. Oh, look, there's the legendary Chris Packham holding a copy of our manifesto, which he has given his endorsement to. We actually had the manifesto before we, we even had neurodivergent labour. The, the, the manifesto came first and then ND labour came after that. And I think we, we kind of like to think of that as, um, as the saying goes, putting the horse before the cart, because it was important to us that the policies and the politics came first and the organisation comes next and is there to fight for these policies. So why have a manifesto? Um, because autistic and other neurodivergent people in our society experience discrimination, distress and disadvantage, and we want some policies to tackle that. So in what ways do we experience that distress, that discrimination, that disadvantage? In diagnosis, or as a lot of us prefer to call it identification, because, you know, diseases are diagnosed, aren't they? Autism is not a disease. Um, waiting lists for assessments, for diagnostic assessments, um, really vary and they're very long in some parts of the country. And also the process is, the process is problematic as well. Independent living. Um, it can be a struggle for autistic people to live independently, partly because services have been cut, um, partly because housing is difficult to get, partly because of the benefit system is very punitive, uh, partly simply because of the, the distress um, that, that we're often caused living in our society. In education, there's a great deal of discrimination. Just, just uh, 
oh, you could do a whole separate presentation just on this, although we're not going to. But for example, autistic uh, kids are way overrepresented in the numbers of kids who are excluded from school. To be honest, I, I hate to see any kid excluded from school. But what's happening with autistic kids is they get wound up and wound up and wound up for months and months and months, whether it's by the sensory environment or by bullying or by frustration or uh, lack of support or whatever. And then they uh, they finally crack and have a meltdown and it's them that gets excluded for it. And that isn't fair. In the world of work, it's a uh, the statistic has been 15 or 16 percent for a few years of autistic people um, who are in full time employment. Um, although recent figures from the Office for National Statistics show that that may have got worse. Um, but it's the uh, it's, it's one of the worst em lowest employment records of any what the statistics would call disability group. And I don't believe for one moment that that's because only 15 or 16 percent of autistic adults are capable of working full time. I think it's because jobs and work are organised in a way that is hostile and excluding to us. Prejudice and discrimination. I'm sure I don't need to tell people watching this um, the levels of pre prejudice and discrimination that autistic and other neurodivergent people can face. And the justice system, um, which I'll say a bit more about in a bit, is, uh, you know, it places us at a great disadvantage, navigating our way through it, whether we're in trouble with the law or whether we're um, a, a victim of, of a crime. So when we drew up our manifesto, we considered five key principles to, to underlie the policies. The social model of disability. So the social model of disability says, look, an individual might have an impairment or a condition, but what you're disabled by is barriers in society um, that obstruct our ability to uh, take part and live equally and independently. The neurodiversity approach, in other words, the acceptance that humanity is neurologically diverse, that it consists of different individuals with different brain wirings or structures. Um, and that's good. And that is not something that humanity should seek to eliminate. It's something that society should um, seek to embrace. Opposing austerity. I've mentioned earlier that uh, cuts to the services that we and other neurodivergent people rely on have taken a terrible toll on people, um, over, particularly over the last 13 years since the 2008 crash. And uh, we're, we're anti-austerity. We're, we're against that. We want public resources used to uh, protect and provide for members of the public, which includes us. Socialism, democracy, democracy and solidarity. So this is very much a Labour Autism and Neurodiversity Manifesto. It's not a manifesto that we're asking all political parties to support and or that we'd expect any other political party to support because it is based on um, our core beliefs of socialism, of wanting a socialist society, a democratic society and of workers solidarity and human solidarity uh, as a way of achieving that. And finally, the principle of nothing about us without us. Um, I'm sure we're all very well aware that lots of people talk about autistic people. Lots of people talk over autistic people. Lots of people talk instead of autistic people. So our manifesto and our campaigns and actions are very much based around um, us leading our own campaigns. Of course, we welcome the support of allies. Of course we do. Um, but we need to be in the forefront um, of, of raising our issues and explaining what they are. OK, so what are the policies then? On diagnosis, we want it to be available to everyone without delays. We want it to recognise neurodivergence in girls and women as well as in boys and men, which is not currently uh, adequately done. We want assessment of related conditions as well. It's very common for someone who's got one neurodivergent condition to maybe have another one or maybe have uh, another physical or mental condition as well. And we need that to be assessed. And we want adequate support after diagnosis. I don't know about any of you watching here, but when I was diagnosed as autistic, which is at the age of 45, I said, oh, well, thanks for that. 
I said, yeah, it was good news. Um, what support services are there? And they said, oh, no, we don't have any of them. <laughs> we just thought you'd like to know. Uh, but people do need proper support after diagnosis. On independent living, we want the cuts in public services to be stopped and reversed. We want local council autism forums to include autistic representatives. And we're quite specific about what we mean by that, because since the Autism Act, local councils have been required to have uh, what they sometimes call a committee or a partnership board or a forum or something like that. And they have autistic people on them. But what, what often they will have is a big majority of professionals and then one or two autistic people who've been kind of handpicked by the council to be token autistic members of, of this body. And we don't want that. We want a large block of autistic people on those committees and we, we want them to be elected by the local autistic people and to include a diversity of autistic people with different needs and different experiences. In the health and social care system, we need the NHS restored, i.e. properly funded, and the privatisation of bits of the NHS undone, so it becomes a unified public well resource service. We want care provision to be close to home, family and support networks. One of the most um, unjust and tragic things, bad things that's been happening to autistic people of late, is that the social care system is in such a bad way um, that if you do need social care, and if you do need residential social care, it can be very hard to get a place. And even if you do, you can sometimes find that it's miles and miles away, even hundreds of miles away from your family home, from people who support you, from your support networks and friends. And that has had tragic, indeed fatal consequences um, in some cases. So that has to change. We want suitable work or decent benefits for all. So, uh, yeah, some of us can work, some of us can't. Um, if we can, let's have jobs that are accessible to us. And if we can't, let's have a decent standard of living anyway. OK, in the education system. We want school workers core training to include neurodiversity. We want provision for neurodivergent students in early years and at all schools, colleges and universities. We want varied teaching and assessment methods. Unfortunately, the education system has been going backwards in this respect over recent years. The kind of uh, the Michael Gove School of Education and Assessment where exams are everything and some people um, often due to their neurotype, are never going to be able to show their best, best of their ability in exams. And we want education about neurodiversity in the curriculum so everyone is learning to accept the fact that different people think differently. In the world of work, we want there to be a legal requirement to make working conditions less hostile. So rather than have a work capability assessment which has caused a great deal of distress to a great many benefit claimants why not instead have a workplace accessibility assessment and then instead of checking whether people are fit to work you're checking whether workplaces are fit for people to live in we want job applications to be accessible and non-discriminatory um, i'm sure a lot of us are quite sick of seeing the sort of job advert that might say um, uh, friendly outgoing team player required for job as computer programmer okay so why do you need to be a friendly outgoing team player to be a computer programmer really don't think that you do so what that employer has done there is set up a, an irrelevant and unnecessary personality filter to keep out people who they think won't fit in which be, which means that people who could be very good computer programmers and i, I know it's an terrible stereotype to say that's autistic people um, but if you were an autistic person who's good at computer programming you might not even bother applying for that job if because you think you're not you're not a friendly outgoing team player we want anti-discrimination law to cover volunteers as well as employees at the moment it doesn't and we're aware of at least one charity which has a blanket rule or had a blanket rule of no autistic volunteers and that is lawful and it's, unlaw it's lawful because the Equality Act doesn't cover volunteering. And we want su support for self-employed neurodivergent people. If you end up working for yourself because uh, that suits you better than working for a boss, um, 
then you might need support in getting that up and running and dealing with all the bureaucracy, etc., that comes with it. Okay, in the area of prejudice and discrimination, we want to see the application of universal design, which is a strategy for making the built environment less distressing and more accessible for everybody. We want a strategy to be applied to tackle bullying and hate crime. We want to make neurological status or neurotype or neurodivergence a protected characteristic under the Equality Act, which means we autistic and other neurodivergent people would be protected legally from discrimination in a way that we are not adequately at the moment. And we want to regulate, we want the government to regulate treatments offered to autistic people and to ban those that are found to be dangerous quack uh, attempts at curing us. Okay, in the justice and legal system. We want to make the justice system accessible to people of all neurologies. Um, we want the legal system to stop criminalising non-harmful, unusual behaviours. Lots of us like to behave in a way that society considers unusual. Uh, some of our types of stimming, for instance. And unfortunately, sometimes people get nicked for it. And uh, if something isn't harmful, it shouldn't be criminalised. We want support and rehabilitation for offenders with ADHD and other neurodivergent conditions. Uh, research shows that uh, a huge proportion of prisoners uh, meet the diagnostic criteria for ADHD in particular, but other neurodivergent conditions as well, and they need specific uh, support and with rehabilitation. And we want to recognise the law to recognise that hate crime can be aimed at neurodivergent people. And in terms of improving understanding, we want public education about neurodiversity at all levels with a campaign to raise public awareness of neurodiversity and more resources for research guided by the needs and concerns of neurodivergent people. And that, that second half of that is really important because we don't want research guided by the needs and concerns of pharmaceutical companies who want to invent medicines to make us less autistic um, or research guided by the needs and concerns of people who want to exploit us. Uh, we want it guided by us and what information and understanding we think can be mobilized to benefit us okay so that was our manifesto and uh, the the good news was that in 2019 you can see the quote there from john mcdonnell um, labor in that general election promised that if elected it would implement the manifesto in full because it recognizes that it's a groundbreaking document um, with some radical yet practical policies that can transform people's lives. The bad news, of course, is that Labour didn't win the 2019 manifesto uh, election, so the manifesto isn't on, on the cusp of being implemented. But that is something we are hoping to change. And in any, any case, our manifesto is something that we fight for in between elections as well as at elections. Which leads neatly on to the next bit, which is what we do, our act, neurodivergent labour, our activities. OK, we do a lot of campaigning for justice. Already mentioned the disadvantage in the justice system that many autistic people face. So I'm going to mention this chap who we were out protesting um, in support of last weekend. He's called Osim Brown. He is 22. Um, he's autistic. He has some mental health and physical health conditions as well. And Osim moved to Britain with his family from Jamaica when he was four years old. He's never been back to Jamaica. He doesn't know anybody there. He wasn't diagnosed or identified during his uh, childhood. So he wasn't given the support he needed. Um, and he, his life got a bit rocky. And he ended up being sent to prison for not stealing a mobile phone. Mm, what do you mean by that? There's a law in Britain called joint enterprise, which means you can be convicted of a crime even if you didn't do it just because you were there. And Osim was there when someone else stole a mobile phone. And even though witnesses told the court that he told them not to steal the phone, he was convicted anyway and he was sent to prison. And he's since been released. But because he was sent to prison under Britain's immigration laws, 
he's automatically served with a deportation order. So he now lives under daily threat of being seized by immigration, put on a plane and deported to Jamaica, a place where he knows nobody, where there is no support system for people like him, um, and to be kicked out by a system that failed him in the first place, that didn't provide him with the support he needed, um, and now threatens to do something which is would do unspeakable harm to him. So neurodivergent labour is part of a major campaign to support Osim. I really hope that by the time you're listening to this, we're able to tell you that the Home Office has seen the error of its ways, because it is due to uh, make a decision on his legal appeal in between when I'm recording this and when you're going to be watching it. Um, but hopefully that will go the right way. If it goes the wrong way, we will carry on campaigning. We already have signatures of over 400,000 people on the petition to support Osim. Um, and if your name is not already on that, uh, please sign it. I think his case encapsulates, it, it, it's a very, um, you know, we support him for basic humanitarian reasons. We don't, we don't want this terrible thing to happen to this vulnerable young man. Um, but also it encapsulates the intersection of neurodivergence and race um, as issues, as characteristics which disadvantage people. Um, in our legal system and that's something we want to challenge. So we've been taking up the issue of justice more widely as well and earlier this year the Ministry of Justice asked for submissions of evidence into because uh, it's doing some work on neurodiversity in the justice system and neurodivergent labour submitted uh, a big document of evidence with input from our members and we called for lots of things including um, more support for neurodivergent people in the justice system. Venues such as courts and interview rooms have a benign sensory environment, restoration of legal aid, printed materials and dyslexia friendly uh, layout and interviews to be straightforward and non-aggressive and lots of other things. If you want to read that document, um, you can read it in full on our website address coming up later. OK, we've been campaigning quite a lot on social care, so there have been Sadly, numerous stories over recent years of abuse taking place in social care, and we have highlighted and campaigned on that. At the beginning of the COVID pandemic, um, the Coronavirus Act enabled councils to stop providing social care for autistic, neurodivergent and otherwise disabled people. Um, we campaigned against that alongside other organisations and I'm glad to say that a few weeks ago, the government announced that it was going to drop that and again require local councils to provide social care and that was um, undoubtedly as a result of the pressure that had been put on them by various campaigning groups. We run education events so just before the recent local elections we ran an online podcast on what neurodivergent people need from our local councils and we had a great array of speakers so we had uh, from left to right of the pictures there, Gethin Jones, who was a Labour candidate for the Senate, the Welsh Assembly, and who works in the prison service. Uh, Nikki Hughes, who is Romani and spoke about issues for autistic people in the Gypsy Romani, uh, Romani traveller, GRT communities. John McDonnell, MP. Joan Martin, who is Osseen Brown's mum. And Andrew Berry, who is a local government trade unionist. You can watch the whole of that podcast, the questions and answers uh, on our YouTube channel and read a transcript of the opening contributions on our website. We respond to political happenings. So, for instance, these are just some examples. Um, a year and a bit ago, there was a report to a rise of a rise in mumps cases. This was just before the pandemic kicked in and everyone started worrying about another rather more urgent health issue. But the reason there was a rise in mumps cases was because a generation ago, a whole bunch of parents didn't vaccinate their children against it because of a um, unscientific, groundless panic um, about autism. So we responded to that. When Oliver Letwin, who was a uh, leading Tory, said that we need security in Britain in case some autistic person uh, tries to sabotage the public infrastructure. We, we spoke out against a bigot, that bigoted comment. And when the cor coronavirus came along and lockdown started, we worked with the Safe and Equal campaign to demand full sick and isolation pay for all. Um, as I'm sure you all know, one of the 
hotbeds for coronavirus infection and death tragically was in care homes and part of the reason for that but also part of the reason for the transmission one of the vectors of transmission of the virus around the place was the fact that lots of workers don't get full sick or isolation pay so when you think you might have covid you some people can be faced with the choice of either going to work and put themselves at risk or staying at home and not being able to pay the rent at the end of the week um, so what we need and what we need ongoing beyond the pandemic as well as a general public health measure is full sick and isolation pay for all and recently we had the uh, may 2021 queen's speech and we commented on that about its failure to reverse underfunding of social care its uh, prevarication over banning conversion therapies and its announcement of compulsory voter identification which we think will lead to fewer neurodivergent people exercising their right to vote because it places a barrier a further barrier in the way of our democratic rights and there are days of this days and weeks and months for everything now isn't there and we do like to comment on most of them so there you go on UN day for the elimination of racism we highlighted Osseen Brown's case and we made a clear statement um, against racism on Holocaust Memorial Day we extended our solidarity to all the groups that were persecuted by the Nazis and highlighted that uh, autistic and other neurodivergent people um, were murdered by the Nazis as well as other groups in learning disability week um, we issued some material and did some campaigning around the rights of neurodivergent people who also have learning disabilities and most recently in mental health uh, awareness day week month last month we issued some material to um to stress that it is not our autism that makes us mentally unwell it's the pressures put on us by society um, that can stress us out okay so last bit now how you can get involved we have democratic structures so if you are a Labour Party member and you're neurodivergent you can join if you're waged it's a tenner a year if you're unwaged it's free um, organisations can affiliate so we've got some trade unions affiliating we've got some constituency Labour parties affiliating we have an annual general meeting every year which votes on policy and that all members can, uh, can attend and we have an elected executive committee that carries stuff out during the year including stuff you can get involved in and our members have the right and some of them are working on it right now to set up local and workplace groups so you can have a neurodivergent labor group in your town or a neurodivergent labor group for people who work in your industry for instance and we have a working group on increasing black and ethnic minority um, involvement and hopefully we'll have some working groups on some other stuff too okay we have events and campaigns so come to our look out for our events and come to our events that picture is of one of our fringe meetings at Labour Party conference we have a, hold a fringe meeting every year at Labour Party conference um, we hold other events too please support and join in our campaigns um, I'm again going to mention Osseen Brown because it's such an important campaign um, there are lots of campaigns we're involved in that we'd like to see you get involved in too and finally you can invite us to speak or I mean you might have watched this and think oh I agree with everything they say they sound brilliant I'll invite them to speak at my event I'm having next month that would be excellent or you might have watched it and thought what a load of rubbish but if you thought what a load of rubbish then invite us to speak anyway and have a debate okay just because we're all autistic doesn't mean we all agree honestly no we're as different from each other as we are from everybody else so but we're only going to take our demands and our struggle for a better future we're only going to be able to take that forward if we argue out our understanding of it and talk about what kind of policies we need to address it so invite us along to that and finally you can find us um, on the internet we have a website ndlabour.co.uk we're on Facebook neurodivergent labour we're on Twitter at neurolabour and uh, we're also on YouTube and Instagram where apparently is that's where the young folks hang out so I'm led to believe so 
Thank you very much for watching this presentation on what is neurodivergent labour. This has taken exactly half an hour. I'm very pleased with my timing because that's what I was aiming for. But we're going to have another, uh, some, some more to show you um, following this and in the future. So solidarity to you all and bye bye.